Hey everybody, Arthur Bourne here. Welcome to episode number 13 of the Bourne Country Podcast, where we take a look back at the great country music of the 90s with the artists who were there and the artists of today and which it inspired. This week, we are paying tribute to the great Daryl Singletary, who sadly passed away on February 12th, just a few weeks back at the age of 46. This coming Friday, March 10th, would have been Daryl's 47th birthday, so I figure there'd be no better time than now to look back on the life and career of one of country music's greatest voices. I want to touch on a number of career highlights, and we also have a handful of audio clips from friends and fellow artists that had crossed paths with Daryl over the years, including uh, Neil McCoy, Ray Scott, Rhonda Vincent, Shane Owens, and more. We'll hear from them throughout the show, and I know there are so many other artists who wanted to be a part of this episode in memory of Daryl, but being out on the road doesn't always allow for everything to line up as one wishes. Let's kick off our tribute with a clip sent in from Drink, Swear, Steal, and Lie, and from here to Eternity singer, Michael Peterson. Wow, Daryl Singletary. My memories of Daryl Singletary go back a long ways. Um, I first met Daryl in 94, 95. But before I met Daryl, what I heard was a lot of people saying that he was the greatest country singer to come along since Keith Whitley. So, of course, I was pretty excited to to have the chance to meet him. I first met Daryl in the uh, apartment that's right above the Randy Travis gift shop, or at least what used to be the Randy Travis gift shop on DeMunn brand. It was right across the street from Shoney's, and uh, I believe Barbara Mandrell had a gift shop there at that time. Of course, all of that's changed now. But there was a group of us guys that none of us had record deals, none of us had publishing deals, and somehow we'd all sort of found each other and started hanging around together because we liked each other's work. And it was a great group of guys. All of these guys went on to have real careers. Daryl Dodd, uh, Shane Decker, Arlo Smith, Mark McGuinn, just to name a few, David Kirsch. And, uh, you know, I I just remember the first night that I met Daryl. I, I guess he had just gotten his deal and... Uh, you know, it was just an exciting time for him, and there was a great big guitar pull over at this apartment, and just remember thinking what a really incredible voice that this guy had and wished him the best. And, of course, you know, it wasn't that long after that. I guess maybe a year, year and a half after that, I got my deal at Warner Brothers, and, of course, he was produced by Doug, Doug Johnson over at Giant, and so because we were both Warner's um, banner guys, you know, we ended up doing a lot of shows together. Uh, CRS uh, in 97, 97, I guess, CRS. So, uh, we, and, and as a result of that, you know, we both were having hit records at the same time. And, uh, you know, so we ended up on a lot of shows together. So I just had a chance to be around him a lot. And, and the sense that I got of, of Daryl from people who knew him, and, you know, I, I wasn't close friends with Daryl, but, I mean, I really respected him and respected his talent. So I'm, you know, from a distance in a lot of the same circles. And the thing I really got from the people that that really knew him well was he was really country. And he was serious about his commitment to country music. And he was a fun-loving, good-hearted guy. You know, those are the things that I remember about him. And when I heard that he passed away, I was just, uh, I was floored. And I know that it's a terrible loss for all of us who love country music and really grew to love Daryl's music. He's going to really be missed. He had a lot of great records left in him. I'm, I'm sorry that we won't have a chance to hear those this side of heaven. The best country singer since Keith Whitley. That's something right there. Now, Daryl Bruce Singletary was born in Cairo, Georgia on March 10th in 1971 to Roger and Anita Singletary, a postal worker and a hairstylist. Daryl sang gospel music throughout his childhood, and according to his official website, Daryl became a rabid country music fan in his teens, listening to Keith Whitley and his all-time favorite artist, Randy Travis. Before moving to Nashville in 1990, Daryl recalled, When I moved to Nashville in 1990, I left Georgia telling my daddy, I want to make my living in country music. I didn't tell him I wanted to be played on the radio every day or be on a video channel every day. I said I want to make a living playing for the people who enjoy my kind of music. Fortunately and thankfully, I have been able to do that since 1995. 
Daryl played the Honky Tonks and open mic nights throughout town and would find work recording demos for songwriters and other artists. Perhaps most notably, Daryl recorded a demo for a song titled An Old Pair of Shoes, written by Jerry Foster, Art Masters, and Johnny Morris. This demo, of course, stands out because it would soon be recorded by Randy Travis and released as a single on his Greatest Hits Volume 1 album. After hearing Daryl's demo recording, Randy Travis pushed for his management team to help Daryl sign his first record deal with Giant Records. In 1995, Daryl Singletary would release his first studio album, featuring singles I'm Living Up to Her Low Expectations, his biggest career hit in I Let Her Lie, The Rowdy, Too Much Fun, and Working It Out. The album was produced by David Malloy, James Stroud, and none other than Randy Travis. Let's hear now from another artist who found early support from Randy Travis, Shane Owens. Not only did Shane share experiences on the road with Daryl, but also a deep love for true country music. Hey everybody, Shane Owens here. I want to uh, tell you a little story about my good friend, Mr. Daryl Singletary. Uh, we go way back. Daryl uh, sadly died here not too long ago. A tragic death and uh, lost a brother in country music, but we were playing the Bonifay Rodeo Dance. It's been 10 years ago and, and uh, Daryl was singing the national anthem at the rodeo and uh, they put him in the back of a pickup truck and he was sitting there singing the national anthem and he'd, he'd laugh if he was here to hear this. He'd remember it well. The truck took off and like they threw him out of the back of the truck and they got to going too fast so here he is in the back of the truck singing the national anthem in front of uh, 8,000 people and uh, they like to throw him out of the back of a pickup truck so he thought that was funny. We all had a good laugh about that and Daryl was a, one of the greatest country music singers of all time, and I was very honored to call him a friend, and uh, his, his uh, voice and legacy will live on forever. He had a voice like no other. He was true country music, and uh, the thing I, I loved about Daryl the most was he was so humble. He loved all his fans, and he treated everybody with respect. He was just a good old boy from Georgia that uh, the good Lord blessed to sing country music. What a voice. You know, he, he was as good as George Jones or any of them when it comes to traditional country music. And he will surely be missed in this business. And, uh, you know, we want to uh, wish his family well and uh, Godspeed to all of them. And, but there are so many members we have with Daryl. You know, we, we were on the same circuit for a little while. Uh, and we'd run into him in Georgia and Alabama and all over the place. And he was always so, so nice and humble. And, like I said, just a great singer. But I remember that night in Bonifay. That'll, that'll forever be a, a funny memory we shared. And if he was here, he would he would laugh about that right there. He was just just a great guy. So I wanted to let y'all know what he meant to me and what he meant to country music as far as I'm concerned. He's one of the best country music singers there'll ever be. And I hope he rests in peace. And uh, Daryl, we miss you. And this is your old buddy, Shane Owens. I hope... Uh, I hope you're up there singing in, in, in heaven's choir, brother, and uh, we'll see you someday. But he was one of my favorites, one of the best, Mr. Daryl Singletary. Thank y'all. Daryl would go on to release two more albums under Giant Records. All Because of You was released in October of 1996, and this would include his second number two charting single, Amen Kind of Love, along with The Used to Bees and Even the Wind. Next would come Ain't It The Truth, released in February of 1998, just over 20 years ago from the recording of this episode of the Born Country Podcast. Ain't That The Truth led off with Daryl's cover of The Note, which had previously been recorded by Conway Twitty and a version by Tammy Wynette. Though the song peaked at number 28 on the country singles chart, this song marks the only time that Daryl found his way onto the Billboard Hot 100 chart overall genres, climbing to number 90. Ray Scott and Joe Bonzel of the Oak Ridge Boys each share their thoughts. You know, they've always said that Conway Twitty was the song's best friend. Um, you know, in my opinion, you could say the same thing about my friend Daryl Singletary. You know, um, the guy just had one of the absolute best country, traditional honky-tonk type voices to ever come down the line. You know, I put him up there with George Jones, Keith Whitley. I mean, um, the guy could just flat out do it. You know, uh, Daryl and I didn't know each other really well, but we uh, we did meet and we'd see each other from time to time. We always had a running joke. He called me Roy Scott. I called him Daryl Singing Taylor because uh, that's the way uh, Porter Wagner introduced us on the Opry the first time we ever played. Um, 
so we used to always have a laugh about that. Even just a few weeks ago, um, we mentioned that. So it's hard to believe he's gone. You know, here's a guy that's my age and, and uh, you know, in, in the prime of his career, of his life. He had four kids, one of which was, I think, three years old. And, uh, you know, my heart goes out to him. My heart goes out to his family and, uh, and to the community and, uh, and to the music world because uh, uh, we lost another great one with Daryl. God bless you, brother. Rest in peace. Hi, Joe Bonzo with the Oak Ridge Boys here, sitting in the back of our tour bus in Mobile, Alabama, listening to uh, Daryl Singletary. I've listened a lot to him lately. I can't claim that I knew Daryl real well. I can't say we were personal friends, but uh, I certainly knew a lot of people that did know Daryl very well. And, uh, and I know this much. As a country music Hall of Fame member with the Oak Ridge Boys, I think he's a huge, huge loss to country music and to the world. Good man. Great, great country singer. Well, listen, one of the best there is. You'll be missed, Daryl, by the Oak Ridge Boys, by everybody else. God bless y'all, folks. At the turn of the century, mainstream country radio began to slowly move further away from the classic sounds of traditional country music. Finding less support of his music on country radio, Daryl Singletary seemed to turn his focus even stronger to the preservation of the traditional sound. His next two studio albums did just that as 2002's That's Why I Sing This Way and 2007's Straight From The Heart each comprised mostly of cover tracks highlighting some of the true classics of country music. On these albums, Daryl put his heart and soul into recording hits like Buck Owens' Love's Gonna Live Here, Conway Twitty's I Love To Lay You Down, and Johnny Paycheck's Old Violin. On his 2002 record, just to get an idea of how respected Daryl was in the traditional country music community, listen to this lineup of guest artists on this album. George Jones, Merle Haggard, Dwight Yoakam, Johnny Paycheck, John Wesley Riles, and the wonderful Rhonda Vincent. Daryl's second album of classic country covers came with Straight From The Heart in 2007, featuring his take on Keith Whitley's Miami, Miami, Don Williams' Some Broken Hearts Never Mend, John Anderson's Black Sheep, and more. Once again, Daryl was joined by the likes of John Anderson, Ricky Skaggs, and longtime friend Rhonda Vincent. Here are some memories from Daryl's friends Neil McCoy and Glenn Templeton. Well, me and old Daryl Singletary go a way back. Uh, all his close friends, I, I won't say all of them, but I know I called him Dallas because uh, he was often, it often mispronounced his name at, at shows. And uh, one night, I think it came off as, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Dallas Singleton. I'm not sure about the last name, but I know the first name. They called him Dallas. So I gave him a hard time about that forever. I even had him as my phone as Dallas. So, uh, uh, but we talked to each other all the time. Uh, we stayed in touch with each other. We, had, we loved our families. We loved being out here on the road. He often bragged about his singing to me, uh, and I bragged about my entertaining to him. And he, t he would tell me, you know, if you could sing better, you wouldn't have to worry about entertaining so much. And I said, well, I guess that's why you don't do it. But it was a, it was a, it was a running gag between us. But uh, one, of the, one of the last funny things that we did together, there's a club down in Dothan, Alabama called Cowboys. And I played there years ago. And when the owner built a new stage, he, uh, he, he put a plaque up that says the Neil McCoy stage on the, uh, right on the back of the stage. And he said, uh, until somebody comes in here and out and entertains you, it's going to be the Neil McCoy stage. So needless to say, it will always be the Neil McCoy stage. But... Uh, I was there uh, probably five or six months ago, and Daryl had just recently been there, and, and folks knew our relationship. So I called him and said, uh, uh, I called him, and, and he was live. He didn't know it. I'd put the phone up to the speaker. Well, he started giving me a hard time, a few cuss words and all that, and then I told him he was live. Uh, after he got through laughing, he, he said, okay, I'll get you back. And then probably two or three months ago, I, I, I just forgot about it and didn't even pay more attention to it. He calls me, starts saying something to me, and, we were shucking and jiving, and he said, oh, by the way, you're live. I'm at, I'm at Cowboys in Dothan, Alabama, and you're live. So he got me back because I don't remember exactly what I said, but I'm sure it was supposed to, probably wasn't supposed to be said over, over a live mic. Uh, but, but we joked each other all the time. And then when I went to his, his, uh, his service, his funeral, a few weeks back, there was a guy from, from Cowboys in Dothan, Alabama, and he came up to him and he said, Neil, he said, if, uh, if you don't mind, we want to put Daryl's name under your name on, on that plaque. And I said, no, no, you won't do that. I said, you can take my name down. It's, it's been a lot of fun, and, and I know y'all have been nice, but 
I said, I'll tell you what, why don't you just take my name all the way down and make it the Daryl Singletary stage? I would, I would love that, and he would too. And he, he, I'm sure he's laughing about it in heaven. When they put that up, when they put the Daryl Singletary stage up there, a sign, he'll, he'll probably send me a sign and let me know, I told you I was going to get it up there. <laughs> I just hate he had to do it like that. But we miss him. We love him. Uh, we pull him for Holly and the kids, and a lot of, a lot of great people have their arms around them, and they're going to be fine. Hey, everybody. This is Glenn Templeton. And I want to share with you what the first thing that comes to mind when I hear the name Daryl Singletary. Uh, and that word is tranquil. Um, Daryl had the ability to tranquilize people with songs and his delivery and the message he had in a song. Um, you know, I got to know Daryl in the later part of his career by being invited to come out and play Keeping It Country out in Las Vegas. And I played a couple of shows with him, one particularly in Michigan. And um, Daryl always had a way with his crowd, his fans, the people, and everybody knew that he was just, just true. He never tried to be really over the top. It was just so subtle and so country. And I got to speak with Daryl backstage uh, several times. One time in particular, uh, we were sharing about our careers and how he felt like his career at one point started meaning more to him than it ever had. And that's when he finally took a stand and said, I'm not going to sing and follow suit to what everybody else is doing in country music. And that spoke measures to me. Um, you know, Daryl lived every single word in every country song, and from Merle Haggard to George Jones to Keith Whitley, uh, Daryl lived every single word of every song and delivered every word of every song. And I'm just so honored to have gotten to know Daryl uh, in the later part of his career. And when I mention top five singers of mine, I mention the name Daryl Singletary uh, in my top five when I say George Jones and Merle Haggard and my dad and Conway Twitty and Daryl Singletary. And Daryl Singletary would be number one on the list had he, been, had he come first or been born first. Uh, but... Voices like that um, and songs and the delivery that he had were the key inspirations that uh, motivated me to move to Nashville a long time ago. And I'm just so thankful and so proud to have gotten the opportunity to know Daryl. And um, we we're wishing his family and everyone in his extended family uh, all the best and we are sending our prayers every single day god rest his soul y'all take care the last two solo studio albums in daryl's discography came in the form of 2009's rockin in the country and what i believe to be the best record that he ever released there's still a little country left in 2015 i can't tell you how many times i've played through there's still a little country left over the past two and a half years since its release but it's easily one of the great country albums to hit over the past decade and probably even further back than that. Daryl was very outspoken on the way he felt country music had turned and his thoughts were very much made aware in songs like Get Out of My Country and Too Late to Save the World. To quote Daryl from his official website, There are still great country songs out there. You just have to either write them or ask the songwriting community for them. And you gotta say, Look, when I say country... I mean country. And lucky for me, on this new CD, I did both. And there are fans who still appreciate that. My fans are not fans of the bro country movement, which doesn't bother me a bit. They're people who like it real. And that's what I give them. Like I say, I've been very fortunate. I just wanted to make a living doing something I love to do. I'm by no means a millionaire, but I make a living singing what I love. Honest country music. If you're listening to this week's podcast, but you aren't quite familiar with all of Daryl's music, I can't recommend this album enough. Buy it directly at darylsingletary.net 
Stream it on Spotify, however you listen to your music, but make sure you hear this record. In 2017, an album titled American Grandstand was released, with Daryl collaborating with his longtime friend Rhonda Vincent on a number of essential country music duets. This duet's record with Rhonda tugs at the heartstrings even more so with Daryl's passing, considering the history that they shared together. Rhonda sang backup vocals on Daryl's debut album, and as mentioned earlier in the show, they recorded a handful of songs together throughout the years. I think it only fitting that the last clip we hear on this week's tribute to Daryl Singletary is a message from Rhonda herself. Rhonda sent this clip that she had recorded on the day of Daryl's passing. I am I'm sitting here in total shock. Daryl Singletary was one of the single greatest singers I have ever sang with. We we shared an intuition for singing a kindred spirit that I don't think I can ever explain. And it's a deep loss. I, I I loved him, and I love singing with him. He was he was just so so. I mean, he was one of those. He didn't know how how great he was. That's the amazing thing. And I just, you know, it's always too late to tell some. I mean, I was, I did tell him what a great singer he was. I'm not sure he could comprehend it, though. And I'm thinking the, I mean, I got a text from him just a few weeks ago. That's really the last time that I, that I had any contact with him. But um, I loved his humbleness. I mean, we would be recording and he would go, you know, I'm going to have to go because I've got to go put on my ham for dinner. Or I've got to put on my beans and i got to go pick up my kids. And he loved his kids so much and his family, his wife. I am, I, I'm heart sick for his children and his family. And I mean, these are small children. And I'm, my heart hurts so much for them. I, I cannot imagine, but he was, I mean, beyond this great singer, a wonderful father, a wonderful husband, and my my heart goes out to Holly and all, the, all of his kids and his entire family, his mom and dad, his siblings, uh, I, but I just, I just wanted to, if you haven't heard, well, it's the saddest thing of all, Daryl Singletary passed today. And um, I'm I'm beyond heartsick. And uh, rest in peace, Daryl. I know you were loved. You were so talented. Rest in sweet peace. Daryl Bruce Singletary passed away the morning of February 12th of 2018 in his Nashville home. Daryl is directly survived by his wife, Holly, and their four children, Mercer, Jonah, Charlotte, and Nora. In support, a fundraiser has been put together by Daryl's management team to help Daryl's family with funeral expenses and other needs. Please visit youcaring.com and search for Daryl Singletary to contribute. I'll be sure to share a link in the show notes for this episode at iwasborncountry.com slash show13. The comments from those who have already donated are incredibly touching. There will never be another voice like Daryl's in country music, and as the clips we've shared today show, they only give a very small sample of how much he was respected in the country music community and by his fans. If you can, be sure to go out and buy all of Daryl's records, share them with friends, and keep Daryl's music alive. Alright folks, be sure to subscribe to the Born Country Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher, and follow the show on Twitter at Born Country Pod. I'd like to close this out with a line from one of my favorite Daryl Singletary songs. It may be too late for the world, but can't we still save country music? Thanks for listening. Take care. <laughs>